Okay, welcome guys to this stone sizing lecture. Now, um, it's really important. I've supplied you with a stone, with actually quite a few different stones, but it's important that you get the sizing correct to match up with the stone that you're gonna use. So if you look here, this is the standard cuts for a round diamond here, and it's giving you the sizes, and this is the ideals, and this is what's been set up in the file that you've got. It's exactly the same ratio as all of these. So these angles and everything are all correct. However, although people should work to these standards, it's not necessarily gonna happen. And you might find that the pavilion area of the stone or the color is further down and you might find the girdles further up or so it's really important that you get a measuring tool like a micrometer to actually measure the overall height and then these parts of the actual stones themselves so you can make sure that it all matches up now I'm going to now open up the ZBrush with the stone and I'm going to show you kind of like how you could move things and how you could set up a base to make sure that it's all the correct scale. So let's jump into ZBrush now, and I'll just pretend that kind of measurements that I've got that I've taken from here or I've taken from a stone. So you're gonna find this different stone template guide that I've got, which I'm gonna open. And this gives me the standard stone that I've got here. Now what you should do is actually take your measurements from the stone itself. So what I generally do is I'll measure from the cullet down here to the girdle area just here. I'll measure that and I'll make sure that that's matching up inside of ZBrush. Now by taking the measurement from there, making sure the diameter is the cor correct diameter. For instance, if you're using a six millimeter stone, it would be six millimeters across, yeah? So um, if your height, what, whatever your height is on this part, then you'd measure down and that will then give you the angle. So if the um, five, five or six millimeters across there, whatever your stone size is, and then that distance from there down, once you measure it, that will give you that angle. So that's the angle where the claw would fit round here. Okay, so also the same with the top. If you're measuring to the table, this top area here, then this angle here, if you've got that diameter measured out, then that angle there will be correct. Now in the ideal world, that angle will be 34.5 and this angle here will be 40.75, but that's never gonna, you know, that's probably not gonna be the case, but it should be close and close enough meaning that you can maybe have to uh, burl out a bit of the material to get it to fit precisely so it should be fairly close but um, it's probably not going to be accurate unless you're really lucky you might have to do a little bit of work so to actually move these areas around what I tend to do is I get the stone I'll then come into scale master I'll size this and this is a five mil stone so if I was making it a six mil stone, I just hit the six here, hit enter, and then I just resize this and it would be a six mil stone. And what you can see here, you saw those blocks coming up because these were measurement blocks that I did on this stone to make sure that it fitted. So I measured across on the table there and I've got my size for that. And I measured across and up on this piece here so that I could get my collet to the girdle, bottom of the girdle. And then I've got the top piece as well for where it hits the top. Um, and so to move those areas around, all I did was went into the actual diamond itself and just basically put it into polygon mode, masked across here, set those blocks up, just centered this, and then I can just move it down to whatever I like. And that goes for the table height as well. I select across this area here. So let me just select across here. And then I can shift this whole lot up to match that, okay? You could just take the table height itself up like that, inverse it, 
and then move that up to the height you need as well and it will give you that angle from there to there so that's just a little bit about how you can go and measure your stone and make sure your your measuring's correct in there for your stone so you'll measure there and then you're going and going with this box um, see what the size is on the box um, so this one in particular you know I just took this Y height and if the Y height was four I just hit four in there hit enter make sure not not all checked on and resize that so it gives me a bigger box so I know that I'd have to then take this um, have that box up I'd have to check this area inverse it and get it right on there and I know that I'm correct then so that's how you can actually do that and get it all working sorry what I would have to actually do is move this down to the bottom of the girdle there and then I could switch back to the stone and obviously move that down to that point there zoom in a bit and just make sure you're hitting exactly on that point which it is so that's how you can kind of measure it out so if your stones are different um, then just make sure that you do some measurements and do some adjustments on these basic diamond shape because you're definitely going to need it because when we come to actually create our little slots for our little claws to go around to hold the stone in those angles are going to be really important so it's good to have them as accurate as possible. I mean, like I said, you're always gonna to have to do a bit of hand, um, hand filing or burring to actually get the metal out for a better fitment, but at least it will give you a starting point. So it will create, create the little notches in there, like we did for section 10, where I actually went in and where's the, Where's the piece? Mm -mm. I actually went in and cut these bits out in here for these little bits to go round. So it's it's important that that angle's correct. So I just wanted to sort of tell you about that, just to make sure your stone's right. Don't just think that the stone oh the stone's the right size. It's a standard round. It's going to fit. It's always worth giving a double check on the stones that you're using um, just to make sure because it could be different, you know. Um, obviously, we've got loads of different types of stone in here, so I suggest you do the same with those as well. We've got a different type of round there. We've got an oval one, an emerald, we've got a round, which is the one we just worked on. So hopefully that's been of help for you so just make sure that you get that i'm gonna um i'll leave these things in here in fact what i did was i did a check sheet on my diamond and i did the the workings on my five millimeter diamond so i worked this out to make to make sure that it was exactly correct um to the pavilion so that's the pavilion to the girdle um height there um the crown or the girdle to the tabletop um that's the height there and I've got the total height here. So um, I did those workings out and I based them upon the ideal size, which is this one here. But it, like I said, it does vary. So yeah, there's loads, loads of uh, information on the internet. So just make sure that you go and have a look and see what um, what's about. And obviously measure your diamond, measure your diamond, then you're gonna be okay. So I just thought I'd include this little lecture, sort of give you an idea um, why that diamond is there. And, you know, I'm not just making it up. I've got that, that diamond that I've created there. I've moved it a little bit so it fits with my diamond, but you might have a different diamond that you need to just measure and check. So use tools like micrometers or uh, calipers to take the readings of the sizes and the widths and just work, do your working workings out like I did here to make sure it all works. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually include these in this file so you can download them. Um, so we'll actually put those in there, complete a little thing there, and I'll call it um, size checks. All right, so I'll upload that, download that in the upload area, in the download area. Okay, this free lecture is brought to you 
by Mojo Mojo Design and is a lecture from my Jewelry Design in ZBrush 2019 Next Generation Techniques course to be found in the, on the link below. So if you want to check this course out, you can visit uh, my site at courses.mojomojodesign and there you'll find full information about this very, very in-depth course. These are the sections and the lectures of this course. It's absolutely huge and I'm adding to it all the time.